Today on In Grace, we're in the Olympic Peninsula in Washington State. And we're going to talk about overcoming life's trials. Ever since I was a boy, I've been fascinated with God's creation. I'm traveling the planet to tell His story about His world. I'm Jim Scudder, Jr. Come with me on another exciting adventure in grace. Hey, Karen, we're in the Olympic National Forest. And it's beautiful, simply beautiful. It really is. We're driving a Jeep Wrangler, which uh, I like. Yeah, um, Charlie wanted a picture of it. Charlie, our <laughs> grandson, yeah. Gramps, we want to see the Jeep Wrangler. He's three going on 10. <laughs> what we're going to try to do is explore the creation, you know, see this beautiful mountain, Mount right. Olympus, to showcase God's glory. Keeping in mind, honey, that we're living in a fallen world. Right, exactly. And you wonder what it looked like back when God created it. What would it have looked like? And what will it look like when He remakes it? It's simply beautiful. I mean, it's springtime here. The trees are starting to bloom. There's a lot of evergreens. And there's moss on the trees. It's beautiful. Yeah, we're actually going to see a lot of different things. Not only the mountains that were in the Olympic mountain range, but also we're going to see a rainforest, the whole uh, rainforest and the moss. It's called the Trail of Mosses. And then we're also going to see these uh, huge rocks coming out of the ocean, the Pacific Ocean on a beach. So we're going to see a lot of different stuff. We're talking though about trials. You know, we're going to use Mount Olympus as a metaphor for a trial. And everybody in life, like right now, we're climbing up and up and up. Life is a struggle. Life is a trial. For a Christian, though, it starts to make sense because God allows certain things into our lives for a reason. And so that's what we're going to talk about. And we're going to, you and I share, because we've had trials in our own lives recently, probably the worst year oh, yeah. that we've ever had to experience Definitely. with losing, each of us losing our dads. How are we overcoming these trials? and using scripture, because mm -hmm. you have to go to scripture. Well, God says he'll place you on higher ground. Amen. And uh, we've always wanted to see the Olympic uh, Peninsula, uh, just so much here, and we're excited to be able to show it to you guys. Hurricane Ridge, really neat place, honey, with beautiful a lot of snow still, and we're in April. So I think it's going to be a while before all the snow melts. I know, you wonder how long it takes for it to all melt. Yeah, so we're at, what, five or 6,000 feet high. We're going to go try to get a, a look at Mount Olympus. But look at all this ice and snow coming off this roof. So that is a little scary, a little cool. Right? <laughs> Don't walk under that. But I mean, look at the snow. Look how yeah. thick this is. And they have to, I think, snow blow it to get rid of it. Let's go take a hike up here. So here's the overlook of Mount Olympus, and that honey is almost 8,000 feet. Wow. 20 more feet, it could have made 8,000. I love how it just keeps going. So what does this make you feel like when you're seeing this, the vista like this? It's breathtaking, and yeah. it just makes you realize, wow, we serve an amazing God that created such beauty. Yeah. It's breathtaking. Literally, you can't, you really can't describe it the best we can. So we're standing here on this uh, big, I don't know, probably 10 feet of snow packed down on the top of this ridge called Hurricane Ridge. And it's this big kind of uh, sloping hill, and then you can't really see over the edge. But then past the valley, back up, you see the Olympic mountain range and then Mount Olympus, the, the highest point in this range, uh, right up there. Still snow covered all up here. So again, we're about five or 6,000 feet mm -hmm. right now, and that's at 8,000 feet, and you can just imagine how long this snow will take to melt. All right, so hun, I've always wanted to do this on national television. Oh boy. Snowball fight. <laughs> if I hit you, do I get extra points? How about hit the camera guy? <laughs> oh.
It's been quite an unusual 12 months for us, hon. Yeah, it has. 2020 was a rough year. In 2021, <laughs> it wasn't just 2020. 2020 was unusual because the mainly the pandemic began and none of us had experienced anything like that. Right. But we've also had our own shares of trials. And some would even say tragedies. We've been talking about the mountains, right? To, yeah. We're surrounded by these beautiful mountains. Mount Olympus is the tallest, but all these Olympic mountains around remind us of some of the, the mountains, the hurdles that we might have to climb in life. Right. Last year, your dad passed away. Mm -hmm. And almost a year to the day, my dad passed away. Everyone loses someone, but it's so different when it's your own parent. Right. And your dad was unexpected. You know, we, we weren't expecting that at all. Whereas my dad, we knew he had heart trouble and they pretty much had told him he only had a few weeks to live. So we were able to say our goodbyes. And, stuff. and your dad was almost 90. He had served in the army back in the Korean War. Right. Uh, so I love that about your dad, a veteran. Also, he brought you into this world. Yep. And so I think that's absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad, when he learned about salvation by grace, it just literally transformed his life. And so he, he just said, I want to serve the Lord. I want to do everything I can. And your dad didn't really My dad wasn't saved. Yeah, my salvation. dad wasn't saved. We're not sure if he got saved toward the end. He was a good dad. He let us go to church growing up. He let us be in Christian school. He didn't put a stop to that. But when you compare the two lives, you know, a man that lived for God and a man that didn't, there's a huge difference to see the heritage that your dad left and the many, many people that he touched, the lives that he touched, and wow, you know, well done, well done. But you did have a chance, I mean, over the years, many chances to talk to your dad about the Lord, about the gospel, about spiritual things. Would he have considered himself an atheist? Yes, in the early years, he would say that for sure. And then he had a stroke, I think it was maybe six or seven years ago, and I went to the hospital to visit him. He said, you don't have to worry about me you know, when I was talking to him about salvation. And then this last time he told my sister-in-law, well, I've got to trust someone. And of course we were all giving him the gospel. And I actually spent about an hour with him in the hospital room. And that was the most intimate relationship I had with my dad over what I'm 56 years old. It was late at night and you got the call and you heard the words that your dad had died. Yeah. Uh, we went out to their house, which was about 40 minutes away, mm -hmm. and was with your dad's wife, Gwen. Mm -hmm. It's still hard because we went into the house and he was still there where he had had a heart attack and, and died. So what was that like? The first thing that you go to is when your dad passed away, how is mom? How are we going to take care of mom? What are we going to do to help mom? And in this case, it was Gwen. My mom and dad divorced after 36 years of marriage. So it was kind of, you know, how can we help Gwen get through this? How can we get God the glory? And I feel like even through both of our parents' death, that was the goal. How can we give God the glory? And in every trial, that's my hope. That's my prayer. Lord, no matter what trial you put in front of me, I want to give you the glory. I want you to get the glory. I don't want myself to get the glory. I want you to get the glory. I want people to get saved. And so we focused on the funeral. Um, my brother did a great job. And we made sure that we could invite as many of his unsaved friends. I know with my dad... You know, it was just as COVID was hitting in, in March of 2020. And we had just canceled our trip to Israel, which was fortunate. It was right before we would have had to get on the airplane. And I get the news that uh, mom had to take him to the emergency room. He had kidney failure. Uh, he had been diabetic for years, but he had taken care of all that really well. And his numbers were good. He had had a checkup. Just a few weeks before. Yeah, he had just preached uh, in, a, in a pastor's meeting. And so, you know, we... He had had some heart trouble over the years, but at the moment he seemed pretty good. He had lost weight and he was just really doing well. So we didn't really think it was so bad that he was gonna die, but we knew it was serious. We hurried down there to Florida where they lived. And after about a day or so, uh, we learned how bad it was. And that was hard because they, at that time, they COVID was just hitting and all the hospitals were shutting down. and. They allowed two people's names on the list, and Julie had gotten her first with My your sister. mom, your sister, mm -hmm. yeah. So she was on the list, and so the next day, you wanted to go and see your dad. And they were like, saying you can't. Yeah, get in. because yeah. you knew this was the end. They were telling you this is it, 
And so somehow, miraculously, you got let in and... Well, I went in as a, as a clergy member. Right. That was the last time Dad and I uh, were able to have a little bit of a conversation. You know, he was in a, a ton of pain. He was in the hospital bed. But he saw me and he said, Jimmy, mm -hmm. you know, is the name he always called me. And I said, Dad, you're looking good. You're losing weight. He kind of chuckled because he knew it looked terrible. Yeah. Uh, tubes coming out and all this stuff. But he said, Jimmy, I love you. Mm -hmm. And so that meant the world to me that I was able to go in yep. and have that moment. It was all day long, you know, just not sure when he would die. Just for a moment, we didn't hear his breathing anymore. And mm -hmm. we all gathered around the bed and shed some tears. And, um, mm -hmm. Thank God, Jesus, yeah. thank God for his life and angels had taken mm -hmm. him instantly. So yeah. we weren't mourning for him mm -hmm. at all. As a matter of fact, it was a, a miraculous healing. Right. So instantly cured of cancer, mm -hmm. uh, didn't have diabetes, yeah. you know, uh, all the issues of life. And also I think he probably heard well done. I'm sure he did. I'm sure he did. But these are hard. And maybe about four or five days later, we were sitting in mom's house in Florida. We were watching the church service at home. Mm -hmm. And I just remember all of a sudden this wave of emotion hit me really hard mm -hmm. in the room. And all, all of our family was there. We were watching Quentin Road on, on live stream mm -hmm. uh, service. And I saw the pulpit. I saw dad's pulpit. Yeah. And it, just, it just really hit me hard. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's the trial. That's yeah. the mountain. But the neat thing is you had, you had that hope that he would be there when you get there. It just leaves a certain kind of peace. You know, even though it's a really hard trial and it was something we didn't expect and it was in the middle of COVID. We couldn't do a proper funeral for him. And it was hard on all of us that couldn't go in and say our goodbyes. But we know it's not over. We know there's eternity. We know we'll see him again someday. Yeah. And that's precious. Jesus is the only answer. We want to encourage you by sending this beautiful print to hang in your house as a reminder of God's unfailing love. Contact us right now to receive this print for any donation. For gifts of $25 or more, we'll also send you these two great books, Beyond Failure and Why Life Hurts. Call now, 800-78-GRACE, or go to ingrace.tv to get your print, A Bridge to Gold, for your gift of any amount. For gifts of $25 or more, we will also include the books Beyond Failure and Why Life Hurts. Call now. That's 800-78-GRACE or go to ingrace.tv. Today on In Grace, we're in the beautiful Olympic Mountains. And we're once again going to teach you how to overcome your trials. It was really cool to see Mount Olympus today on such a beautiful, clear day. Yeah, it was gorgeous. It was gorgeous. And somebody up there told us, you picked a good day because usually it's really windy. Yeah, and then they say there's rock slides and, you know, all... The road lot, was closed yesterday. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of cars. But today was just perfect. So that was a lot of fun. And now we're going to go east in to what's called the whole rainforest. Right, we're going to do a trail that's called Hall of Moss. The reason they name that is because all the trees around here have moss on them. Yeah. So this must be just full of moss. Yeah, and it's just kind of spectacular. Uh, maybe a little, a little eerie too, perhaps. Just kind of the right. way everything hangs down, kind of like uh, scary-ish. Right. But and I can't believe it's a ten-mile hike, and we're going to do it, no problem. But <laughs> yeah, how about like take a zero? Right, oh, right, oh, right, okay. right, 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 right. But it's neat to go to a rainforest. I don't, right. don't know that I've ever been to one. Yeah, I don't think I have. This is really pretty. This will be fun. Yeah, we made it, huh? Yeah. The whole rainforest. And you have all this moss already. <laughs> I guess I didn't really think about how big the trees would be out here. But these are really big, not quite like a sequoia. But almost. But I mean... yeah, just incredibly massive. You okay? Do you need any she help? She got injured on the trail. We're oh, okay. Do you need oh. help? Do you want us to help you back? Well, let's see. She's starting to get a little... Oh, oh, oh. Yes, yes. I'll take one arm. If you want to take one arm, yeah. that would be appreciated. Sure, sure. 
about what 20 minutes ago we looked that way and a lady's coming down the trail and just all bloodied and a man's hubbing her and she's stumbling and well, we helped her back to the visitor center yeah so an ambulance is coming well we prayed with her and her name is julie so hopefully we'll get an update on how she's doing but she had had like brain tumors and all these surgeries and then she hit her head and her face yeah so it was really swollen and she seems alert so i think she's gonna be okay but just kind of makes you think about what's important in life, right? right. So as we were finishing the hike, uh, we hear a helicopter flying over. So I'm thinking, I wonder if it was Julie. So I went and talked to the ranger and he said that she's in the ambulance, but it seems like she's her vitals are stable. I think she's gonna be okay. They do have the helicopter here. Uh, flying her somewhere just to make sure, but uh, praise the Lord, I think she's gonna be okay. Check it out, wow. world's record Sitka spruce. Probably a tourist trap, but you wanna check it out? Yeah. Let's go, we like walking. Yeah. You think Might you would kind of just see it right now, be right? Be a little disappointed. Oh, that's it. Oh, I think that might that's be it. That's the world's largest Sitka. I could tell you from right here. Wait, stop, wow. take it in. Take it in. So it is different than the ones that we've seen. Yeah, that's impressive. I mean, it's not really, really, really tall, but it is girthy. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, it smells good, too. Imagine this in your house as a Christmas tree. Totally. Wow. Wow. Well, that was worth it. Not a tourist trap. Definitely no. come see yeah, the world's cool. largest Sitka spruce. All right, huh? Yeah. We have another big tree. Another big cedar to look at. Well, you know, this must be the land of world record trees because we keep seeing all these signs, big tree, big tree, big tree. So we saw that giant Sitka spruce. I think that uh, is no, part of, yeah, see oh, how that fell of that off? One? Yeah, so this is, this is the big cedar and it's still alive. Obviously, it's got some problems way up there, but still, <laughs> you know, you still have life on this thing. But this piece looks like, see how it looks like it's separated off? Yeah. So this was a big, big, big piece that might have fallen off and down. Well, this is a big cedar. That is huge. I'm glad we stopped. Look over here. Is that like a big burl right there? Yeah. And then see this root coming down? Look at that. This is fantastic. This massive tree. How old? How old do you think this thing is? Just amazing. All right. Well, there's soft. probably more big trees to see. Let's get rolling. Okay. Thank you so much for watching our In Grace special today here in the Olympic National Park. To end our show, we're here by the Tree of Life. The tree of life, honey. I mean, I thought this was in the Garden of Eden, but here it is. You know, you have a lot of erosion on these beaches, the Pacific Ocean's right here. And it looks like there was a tree there and all the ground eroded below it. So you can see the roots, you can see the tree. It is beautiful to see the tree of life, but it was part of the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve were allowed to eat of the tree of life. There's a tree of life in Revelation in the new heaven, the new earth. I think this is very appropriate to uh, talk about life and death here at the spot. Ultimately, all of us are gonna die. You right. know, your dad had a heart attack, my dad had cancer, and so this is just part of what happened in the Garden of Eden, our sin, our rebellion against God. God didn't intend for all this, he knew it was gonna happen, but he still wanted to show us his great love to allow his son, his name is Jesus, he lived 2,000 years ago, he was God in the flesh, he came to this sin-cursed world. He never sinned, he lived a perfect life, yet he died on a cross. He poured out his blood for you 
and for me. And then the Bible says very clearly that if we'll simply believe in him, we'll have eternal life. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. That's you, that's me. that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Don't put it off, trust Christ today. And then if you do, you will one day have the opportunity to see the real tree of life. Well, God bless you. Again, we hope you've enjoyed our In Grace special here from Washington State, the Olympic Peninsula. And I hope that uh, we can encourage you to climb that Olympus that God has for you. And remember, he's with you always, even unto the end of the world. I don't think you can beat sunset. Anywhere in the world we go, right. we want to go see the sunset, especially on a beach. And Never this one's- Never see too many. Yeah, this one's spectacular. Just, and you have the driftwood, you have all these rocks. I love that every day though, there's a sunrise and a sunset. No matter how bad it gets mm -hmm. in Jesus life. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then you have a new sunset yep. and you have a new sunrise. Yep. Just remember that. His mercies are new every morning. Okay. Jesus is the only answer. We want to encourage you by sending this beautiful print to hang in your house as a reminder of God's unfailing love. Contact us right now to receive this print for any donation. For gifts of $25 or more, we'll also send you these two great books, Beyond Failure and Why Life Hurts. Call now, 800-78-GRACE, or go to ingrace.tv to get your print, A Bridge to Gold, for your gift of any amount. For gifts of $25 or more, we will also include the books Beyond Failure and Why Life Hurts. Call now, that's 800-78-GRACE, or go to ingrace.tv. Next week, part two of Overcoming Your Olympus with Jim and Karen Scudder in Washington State. I lost my dad, you lost your dad within about a year of each other recently. And he used to say, don't get bitter, yeah, get better. Get better. Yep. And he used to also talk about how after every trial, there's a blessing. The greater the testing, the greater the blessing. And that's so true. Record every single In Grace episode. You will be so blessed as we learn all about God's world and God's Word. In Grace is a viewer-supported ministry. Thank you for your prayers and gifts.